In the previous video, we saw the general mechanism of aldol reactions. We also saw that aldols, which are beta hydroxy aldehydes or ketones, further undergo dehydration when heated in the presence of a base to form highly stable alpha beta unsaturated compounds. So, based on this, let me ask you something. Can you figure out the products that would be obtained in these two cases? In the first case, we have two moles of an aldehyde undergoing aldol condensation reaction. In the second case, instead of having two moles of the same aldehyde, we have two different aldehydes. One is a propanal and other one is an acetaldehyde. So, as you can see here, the aldehydes in both of these cases are undergoing aldol condensation reaction. So, my question is, can you predict the products formed in these two cases? Pause the video and give it a shot, alright? So let's look at the first case. So the first step in this aldol reaction would be the abstraction of the alpha hydrogen atoms, correct? OH- would abstract the alpha hydrogen atom here and produce the corresponding enolate ion, which is CH3CH-CHO. Now the second step is the nucleophilic addition reaction, where the enolate ion attacks another molecule of aldehyde. And the final product obtained after protonation is this here, which is beta hydroxy aldehyde. Now, on heating, this beta hydroxy aldehyde can further undergo dehydration to give the corresponding alpha beta unsaturated compound here. So, the double bond is formed by the elimination of water molecule between the alpha and the beta carbon atoms. And here we have the formation of a highly stable product. Now, this is nothing new. You are already familiar with the classic aldol condensation reaction, right? But what about the second case? Let's see. In the second case, we have two different aldehydes, both of which have alpha hydrogen atoms. That means both of these aldehydes can form enolate ion in the presence of a base, correct? And these enolate ions can attack another molecule of the same aldehyde or the different aldehyde, correct? So, let's look at the enolate ions formed. Propanyl gives CH3CH-CHO and acetaldehyde in the presence of dilute NaOH would give us this particular enolate ion. Now, as I said before, these enolate ions can attack another molecule of the same aldehyde or a different aldehyde. So, when this enolate ion attacks the same aldehyde, we get this particular beta hydroxy aldehyde and when this enolate ion attacks acetaldehyde, we get this particular beta hydroxy aldehyde. Similarly, CH2-CHO enolate ion can attack propanal as well as acetaldehyde giving us these two different beta hydroxy aldehydes. So, these are the various aldol products formed in this reaction. And in the second step that is on heating, these aldols undergo dehydration to give us the corresponding alpha beta unsaturated compounds. So, in essence, we get four different products as you can see here. Now, such a reaction where the aldol condensation is carried out between two different aldehydes or ketones is called crossed aldol condensation reaction. And depending on the reaction conditions, we get different amounts of these different products. Now, from a laboratory perspective or from a chemist's point of view, this is not a great scenario at all where we end up getting a mixture of products in different amounts. But this does not mean that a reaction, crossed aldol condensation reaction is not useful. All it needs is a little bit of planning. Yes, you see, crossed aldol condensations can be effective if it is planned in such a way that only one of the reactants can form an enolate ion. That is, only one of the reactants has an alpha hydrogen atom so that it can form an enolate ion and the other reactant that is more likely to be attacked is available in excess. For instance, let's look at a successful crossed aldol condensation reaction. What different products do you think would be obtained in this particular crossed aldol condensation reaction? Why is it crossed aldol? Because we have two different aldehydes here, right? One is a benzaldehyde, one is an acetaldehyde. And in this reaction, you can see that only one of the reactants has an alpha hydrogen atom. Benzaldehyde is non enolizable as it does not have an alpha hydrogen atom, which means in this reaction, all the enolate ion would be formed only from acetaldehyde. So, the first step is the formation of the enolate ion from acetaldehyde followed by the nucleophilic attack on the benzaldehyde. So, this nucleophilic attack followed by protonation would give us this particular beta hydroxy aldehyde. And on dehydration with the elimination of a water molecule, we get the corresponding alpha beta unsaturated aldehyde here. 
Now this is an example of a successful cross dialol condensation reaction where this product is formed in major amounts. And this is again because only one of the reactants has an alpha hydrogen atom whereas the other reactant is non enolizable Now we can carry out this reaction successfully in lab by following this strategy which is to add the compound with the alpha hydrogen which is our acetaldehyde slowly into a solution containing the non enolizable benzaldehyde in the basic medium. So this way acetaldehyde as soon as it comes in contact with the basic medium forms the corresponding enolate ion and the enolate ion formed would immediately react with a large excess of the benzaldehyde giving us one major product almost exclusively. So this is an example of a crossed aldol condensation reaction where we have used two different aldehydes. We can also use ketones successfully in crossed aldol condensation. For example, here we have benzophenone reacting with benzaldehyde. Again you can see that we have only one reactant which has the alpha hydrogen atom. And on cross aldol condensation reaction we would get this particular alpha beta unsaturated compound in major amounts. So to reiterate the only thing we need to ensure to have a successful cross aldol condensation reaction is that we have only one reactant which has an alpha hydrogen atom and use the other reactant in large excess.